Presentation in Unit 1, entitled Disturbance in the Forces. This is the ability to destroy a planet is insignificant compared to the power of the Force. Darth Vader. Okay, so, the goals for this particular presentation are that you be able to describe a Force in terms of magnitude, direction, and origin of the Force, that you be able to sketch and interpret a free body diagram illustrating forces, and that you be able to determine the net force acting on a particular object. So, um... First, what we already know. You should know from middle school or earlier grades that a force is a push or a pull that's exerted on an object. You should also know that gravity from 7th grade, gravity governs the motion of our particular solar system. So whenever we talk about forces, really a lot of the times we're talking about what's called an unbalanced force. And an unbalanced force is one in which um, there's not something there to cancel it out. So... What we learned in the lab. We learned in the lab that, number one, you could have multiple forces exerted on an object. You can have two people pull on something. There could be gravity. There's lots of times in which you have multiple forces that are acting on an object. You also know that forces can cancel each other out. So what is a force? A force, in the easiest definition, is a push or a pull on an object. Now, you can actually expand on that and say it's a force is a push or a pull on an object uh, that has the ability to, doesn't have to, but can change the shape or the motion of a particular object. Um, it's generally measured with a spring scale. There's also something called a force meter that you can use. Um, and it also has an SI unit of the Newton, and that's after Isaac Newton, who we'll talk about a little bit later in this unit. Um, but he gave us a lot of the information we now have on force, and so that's why the, the unit of the force is called the Newton. So we're going to talk about in this class four major types of forces, uh, four forces that you see in your everyday life. And those four forces that we see here are going to be, uh, number one, the gravitational force. Now, you should be familiar with gravity. Uh, if you drop something, if you fall, you always fall towards the ground because of the gravitational force. But the definition we're going to use is it's the mutual attraction between any two objects with mass. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the applied force. The applied force is a direct push or a pull. So if you push something, that's generally what we think of as a force. We're going to call that the applied force. Next, we have... Oops, not that. Next, we have uh, the normal force. And the normal force is referring to... The normal force is referring to the force exerted by the surface on something. Uh, one of the things about this particular picture, which is interesting, is... Um, how is that working there? Okay, generally speaking, if you have a brick in the air, it's going to fall to the ground. And the reason why, if you stack bricks up, that they don't fall is because there's a normal force pushing it up. The normal force is the upward force exerted by the surface, but there's nothing there. Uh, the next thing, the next force we're going to talk about is the frictional force. And you should be familiar with friction if you take your hands and rub them together. That's an example of friction. Or if you allow a ball to roll in the grass, it comes to a stop because of friction. Um, there's lots of other places or not lots of other forces that you can talk about and use specific letters. Like you can talk about the electromagnetic force. Or you can talk about the spring force. Or you can talk about there's lots of other forces like the kinetic friction force. But we're going to stick to these four for the most part. But know that anytime you see a force, it's going to have a capital F. That indicates that it's a force. And the subscript, this letter right here, is indicating the type of force that it is. So illustrating forces. A force is a vector, which, once again, from the previous unit, a force, uh, a vector is something that has both what we call magnitude and direction. In other words, it has a number associated with it telling us how much, and it has a direction saying, I'm pushing it 30 newtons upward, or I'm pushing it 10 newtons upward. Whenever you illustrate these forces, the length of the arrow is indicative of the magnitude. Okay, The arrow is pointing in the direction that that force is being applied. So we're always going to draw forces as vectors. In this first example, fundamental A1, it says match the description with the type of force. So you should be able to do this based on what we just talked about, but we'll start with the easy ones. The gravitational force is always present on Earth. Okay, what is exerted by the surface? That's the normal force. The frictional force would slow a car down. And the applied force is a push or a pull. Actually, this isn't a great definition because this applies to all of them. They're all a push or a pull, but the push or a pull exerted by a person or an object is really the applied force.
Okay, next we have the developing one. <clears throat> this is match the forces uh, to the arrows below. So the first thing we need to do is kind of get our bearings straight. Uh, we're going to say that north, east, south, and west. Those are our directions that we have there, so it kind of puts it in perspective. So the first thing we can do is we can say that this has to be the south vector. So this one right here has to be 10 newtons south because it's the only one that's pointing to the south. We know that this one has to be 10 newtons to the north because, and that's confusing, 10 newtons to the north, um, because it's the only one pointing up. Now we have two, vec two vectors that are both pointing to the east. So we have to look at these two vectors and decide which is which. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say that this right here is 10 newtons to the east, and this is 20 newtons to the east. And the reason why I know that is because the length of this vector is more than the length of this vector. Uh, the next one, it says, an object has 20 newtons of gravitational force and a 10 newton force applied. Draw the forces acting on the object. So we're going to say, okay, gravitational force is, ten, is 20 newtons. So we can draw it that way. Now the next one says it has a 10 newton force applied to it. Now the 10 newton force that's applied to it can actually be drawn in any direction. So as long as you draw it and you say applied force... 10 newtons, or you can say gravitational force, 20 newtons, this would be a, a valid answer. If you drew your applied force in a different direction, that'd be okay as well. Next, there's a specific way of being able to draw forces, and that specific way that we have to be able to draw forces is called a free body diagram. In a free body diagram, we generally represent an object with a dot. And then what we do is we draw all the forces out from that dot, um, no matter where they're kind of coming from. <clears throat> so in this particular case, it says equilibrium occurs whenever the forces cancel each other out. So whenever you have forces that cancel each other out, that goes, an example of that would be this, two forces in opposite directions that are the same magnitude, they cancel each other out. That's an example of uh, equilibrium where they cancel each other out. Next, you have equilibrium results in constant velocity or no motion. So a force can only change the motion of an object if it's not canceled out by another force. And objects with a net force are, tend to have an acceleration, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. But So, an example of a free body diagram um, for a ball at rest is shown here. You see all the forces are labeled. The arrow length is proportional to the magnitude of the force. So this is proportional to this, which makes this thing in equilibrium. So the ball's not moving because there is no net force. So since there is no net force, the ball's at rest, uh, the net force of this particular object would be zero. But we'll get into that in just a minute. So now it says draw and label a free body diagram for a car in equilibrium. Okay, so at equilibrium implies that, okay, all the forces have to cancel each other out. So one thing that I do know is going to be present is going to be Fg. The reason why Fg is going to be present is because there's always a gravitational force. Okay. There's a gravitational force, it's always going to be there. Now, if there's going to be a gravitational force and this thing's going to be in equilibrium, I know there's going to be an upward force called the normal force. Also, the car could be in motion. The engine of the car could be moving. So I'm going to go ahead and say that there's an arrow to the left, and I'm going to call that the applied force. If I do that, I could also say there's an arrow to the right, and I could call that the frictional force. Some people may have drawn theirs a little bit differently. They may have said, okay, here's Fg, here's Fn, and that's it. That would be a perfectly valid free body diagram. It's just saying that the engine is not on, so it's not actually moving to the left or to the right. <clears throat> now it says draw a free body diagram for a drop of water in free fall. So if you have a drop of water that's falling, the only force that's exerted on it is the gravitational force. There is no other forces that are acting on it. There's nothing pushing it to the left. There's no wind. There's no friction. Um, generally, we say there's no friction whenever it's in free fall. Now, we do know that there would probably be some air resistance, but free fall implies that there is no friction at all. Next, this is draw and label the forces acting on a rocket accelerating upward towards the International Space Station. So, the first thing we do is we say, okay, this rocket does have weight pulling it down. Now we do know that it's accelerating upward. So we do know the arrow going upward has to be larger. Now one big mistake that people make is they go ahead and they label it Fn. 
Okay, this is not Fn. Remember the definition of the normal force is it's exerted by the surface. Whenever a space shuttle takes off, it no longer has a force exerted by the surface. Instead, it has to be the applied force of the engine pushing it upward. All right, so the next one says, is this an accurate free body diagram for a car traveling at, at final velo or excuse me, at constant velocity? And you have to justify your answer. <clears throat> so you have to look at this and say, okay, well, are these all of the forces that are acting on the car? And your answer can vary, but for the most part, we're going to say that this, this isn't going to be everything. There's going to be more forces than just one frictional force. Instead, you're going to have an applied force. It's going to be the engine. You are going to have some weight, which is the gravitational force. You are going to have the normal force, but in addition, you're going to have you're going to have friction from the tires. You're going to have rolling friction. There's going to be wind. There's going to be a lot of other forces exerted on a car other than just four. So, although this would be a good representation, it's not entirely accurate because there are more than four forces acting on an object. Next, net force. Net force is not a new force. Instead, it's a combination of all of the forces that are acting on an object. So whenever we say net force, it's not like gravitational force or normal force. It is a combination of those forces to produce the total force. So forces in the same direction are added. So if you see these two right here, you would have a net force of 12 newtons right, with the right being the direction. Here you would say these are in opposite direction, so you would say it's 8 newtons to the left, and so that represents the net force. Now a lot of times <clears throat> you'll see net force represented in two ways. You'll see this right here, which is the Greek letter sigma, which stands for the summation or total force, or you'll see it actually as F and then a net. Okay, both of those represent the net force. So vectors in different directions cannot be added or subtracted. So you can't take a, a force of 10 newtons to the right and five newtons down you can't take those and add them together, okay, because they're not going in the same direction. You can't subtract them because they're not going in opposite directions. Instead, when if you were to combine these forces somehow, you would have to use the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if you're not familiar with the Pythagorean theorem, okay, the Pythagorean theorem is how you find the side of a triangle. Remember, you have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So you would say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So, for each set of vectors, should they be added or subtracted? So, if I were to take these two vectors right here, if I were to combine the blue vector, we're just going to stay with the blue vector, and I combine it with the red vector, those would be added. If I were to take the blue vector and the yellow vector, would they be added or subtracted? And there would be none. Okay, you can't add or subtract the blue vector to the yellow vector. What about the blue and the green one? None. You can't add or subtract them because they're not in the same or opposite directions. The last one, the blue and the purple, you would subtract because they're in opposite directions. In the next one, proficient, it says, what is the net force acting on the truck below? Whenever you're looking at the net, the net force acting on the truck, you have to take it as a combination of all the forces. You look at them individually. So I have 80 newtons up, I have 80 newtons down. When I take those and combine them, they cancel out to be zero because 80 minus 80 is zero. So my net force upward and downward is zero. But now if I take a look at my left and my right, I have 100 newtons to the left and 20 newtons to the right. That's going to give me a total force or a sum of the forces of 80 newtons to the left. And it's real important that you put that direction there. Finally, we have a mastery level question. It says find the net force of the object based on the free body diagram below. And in this particular case, we have a 50 newtons and 20 newtons. Okay, it's real important that you actually read these and not just look at the pictures because a lot of times they're not drawn to scale. So if you say this one says 50 and this one says 20, I have a 30 newton force to the right. And I have 50 up and 10 down, which means I have a 40 newton force up because 50 up minus 10 down is 40. So here's my problem, is I have a 30 newton force to the right, and I have a 40 newton force up. So this becomes a situation in which we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So we would take these, and we would complete our triangle, and we know that the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or 30 squared plus 40 squared, 
equals c squared. Now you may know this, you may not, that a 30-40 a is a special triangle. It comes out to be a whole number as well. So 30 squared plus 40 squared, when you take those and add them up and then take the square root, it ends up being 50. If you don't know that, go ahead and plug it in your calculator. Do 30 squared, you get 900. 40 squared, you get 1,600. That ends up being 2,500. You take the square root of both sides, and you end up getting 50.